What's up, guys? Welcome to Resource Life. My name is Chris. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the most important episode I've ever made. It goes over the 22 major things that I am doing to prepare myself for times like this when sales are slow. Right now, I have a 50% decrease in sales from my normal clip, um, but my sales are still enough to pay my bills. And I, hopefully, this my experience in preparing myself for this type of situation can translate into helping you guys boost your sales right now. So you may want to watch this video a couple of times. I apologize. It is really heavy. So it's really, really a comprehensive dive into how I organize my business and how I prepare for situations like this. So if you don't mind, please smash the like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content like this. If you want to see a summary of the list, it's on my Instagram. It's also Daily Refinement. You can take a look at that list and on the YouTube Community Center. Um, each section is pretty heavy, so you may want to skip ahead or save certain parts of it if you want to go over it again. But again, these are my top tips to make sure that your sales stay high year round, even in an emergency situation. Let's get into it. Okay, this is my number one favorite tip, and that is to write a job ad. So there's a lot of people who are a one man or one woman show and they don't want to work with other people. That's great. You should still do this because what you're essentially writing the ad for is what you do all day. So you want to document the exact processes that you're you're working through. And then if you write an ad, it's really going to clarify what you're looking for. And if you're really brave, even if you're not hiring, you're going to launch this ad and then find out what people ask you. The questions that people ask are going to be like, well, what hours can I work? What kind of skills do I need? What kind of experience do I need? Uh, how much does it pay? Um, what do you expect from me? And then just apply those metrics to yourself. It's really, really valuable to do it on Craigslist or an Upwork. When you post the ad, you're going to get an ocean of responses back to you. And then remember my previous advice of do not hire people who are super uh available. If they're available anytime, that's the wrong person. You want to find somebody who's busy and already good at time management. If somebody says, hey, I have an extra 10 hours a week, I can help you. This might be a money person to hire because they already know how to manage their time. Um, I look for students, look for people who are very nimble on a cell phone because in, you want people to take photos that understand what the mobile experience looks like. So I put in here, high dexterity with a cell phone, experience with camera equipment is not necessary. If you find somebody who is a professional photographer, they have a lot of habits that are difficult to untrain. And so the, the e-commerce photography is a lot different than other kinds of photography and it depends on what your store is. If you sell, you're in a boutique and you sell really high-end items and you need very lifelike photos with daylight, um, let's say for example, a lady on Instagram, Loretta. Um, she's awesome. She's a good, I consider her a great friend. Her handle is thrift love sell. She takes photos with daylight, like in her kitchen for certain collectibles or, or uh, house goods. And it's fantastic because it gives the buyer the feeling and experience of what it's like in their home. It takes a lot of skill to do that. If you were going to write this into an ad, you would say that. I'm looking for somebody who's had experience in taking pictures of home goods in their natural setting. Versus for me, I'm going to say, I need you to be systems oriented. Like you ideally have worked at a fast food restaurant or Starbucks because I don't want any creativity. Uh, my, my pictures are on a plain white background. I want speed. I want consistency. Um, generally, it's people who um, have worked in quick serve restaurants before um, that have the best experience in my particular model. But you're going to have the experience working with this. This is probably the hundredth time I've written an ad. I've even written an, an, an ad for owner wanted just to see what kind of criteria I would come up with. And you can do that. Um, I'm looking to hire a store owner slash manager for my e-commerce business and you'll own a piece of the pie and um, you, you know it requires a $2,000 to $5,000 investment to get started, whatever you want to put into the, uh, the mix to get people interested. And again, when people start asking you questions, you're going to really, really refine your process and it's going to make it um, really easy. So this is an actual ad that I've written. You guys know that after $600, do need to issue a 1099 to the person. So I like to have a record. So 
that's why I'm okay with paying cash for, just to see if I like them or not. And this is another thing that people need to get over. If you are a one man or one woman show and just getting started, it's going to be intimidating, right? How do I hire someone to help me? So instead of thinking of it like you're hiring someone permanently, just put up looking for someone on Saturday to help me. Start with a, a smaller um, workload and get an idea of what they're going to be doing, what they need help with. It's even worth it to have them observe you and just write down what you're doing so you can really get a clear idea of what it is. This is not um, a rocket science, but it's also not cookie cutter, meaning the way I do it is definitely not the way you do it. But the way you do it is either exactly how you want it done or it's not and somebody observes you and lets you know what it is that you're actually doing, you can adjust it so it fits exactly what you do want. So again, this is a learning process. Everyone's business is different, but this is the most valuable tip I can give you because this really clarifies what you're looking for. Write a job description for all the different things in your company, post it online, find out what kind of questions you get, and even write one for the owner. What is it that you want to do in your business? Do you want to list all day? Do you want to only shop all day? What it is, outsource the rest. I'll see you guys in the next section. I recommend doing price research and category research when you are selling stuff on eBay. A lot of people skip this step because they, they just look for what's around them, what's convenient. But if you spend some time looking for what's selling, it's going to save you a lot of time because you can sell things that people actually want to buy. So we're going to use this example of Untuck It versus Robert Graham. Um, you know, Robert Graham is a, is a well-known brand that a lot of people buy. But if you look at the Google search traffic, you can see that a lot more people are looking for Untuck It. In some cases in December, quadruple the traffic on Google is Untuck It. So you can also see when you go to eBay, um, if you type in um, Robert Graham into Terapeak, you can see that you know, 67,000 sold, 15,000 people are selling it. Compare this to, um, let's go to Untuck It and look at the difference. Only 5,000 sellers and 19,000 sold, a much higher average sold price. So what this tells you is that there's a third less competition, a lot less people are selling it. Um, if you go to Google, you, you can see that Robert Graham is a, is a lot more, uh, less popular than Untuck It. Untuck It is like the trend right now where people are going to offices in a more semi-professional way and their shirts are not tucked in and it looks a little less funky because the bottom of the shirt is actually hemmed in a stylish way. So, you know, that trend is in. You can use Google Trends, which is free, to get an idea of what's selling well and what's not. So maybe spend twice as much time sourcing. Maybe pay a little bit more when you find an untucked item and less for Robert Graham because you can just look at the, the traffic. That being said, Robert Graham does sell for more money. So it's important to recognize your specific market. And if you spend time looking in therapy and researching different categories and different products, it's gonna save you a lot of time on the back end because you won't have inventory that is stale. So again, take advantage of the free therapy tool with a store subscription on eBay, and then they are going to move that into the seller hub, which is awesome. But for right now, just take advantage of this tool, spend some time in here. I recommend you spend time in here every day. There's no reason not to really sharpen the saw and really get to know what market that you're in. And then Google will tell you, you know, that this is their business is letting people know what to buy. They charge for ads. For you to spend a lot of money on ads, you need to know what's going to convert. So take advantage of these free tools. I'll see you guys in the next section. Okay, I recommend four different types of promotions. Um, one is going to be an order discount. So if you spend a certain amount in your store, you get a discount. One's going to be a combined shipping discount. This is one of the reasons why I charge for shipping. Because if you don't charge for shipping, you can't offer a shipping discount because it's already free. So um, I, I recommend an order discount, a shipping discount, a volume discount if you have more than one item. I have some sandals that I'm offering at 8% off if you buy two pairs. Um, so what customers are doing is not only are they getting a... 8% discount, they buy two pairs of sandals or more, but the second and subsequent sandals ship for free, right? So people are double dipping on that. That's done relatively well. I've had an average order size of three on that. So customers are ordering three pairs to get the extra discount. Sale plus markdown, you can mark down your items as a traditional sense. Um, you can mark your items up and then mark them down. You can also 
um, set it up so that you systematically lower and it, lower the price by doing a more aggressive sale every month or so. So the four different types are basically order discount, so the amount of the order, a shipping discount, volume pricing, meaning more than one sells for, et cetera, and then a, a markdown sale, which is like a traditional sale. I recommend at least 20%, but don't do 90% off because it looks fake. Like an item that normally has an MSRP of $50, you can't say it was an average, a normal uh, MSRP of $450, and now it's 90% off. Customers aren't are not dumb they're gonna look at that and think that you are a moron and probably not buy from you so don't mark things down over dramatically because then it looks artificial and fake um, then you might want to use promoted listings this is something that I, I i dabble with you can see here I, I i turn it off pretty frequently because i don't think it's necessary but it's nice to see you know when you do turn it on you do get an influx in traffic for me i actually get about twice as much traffic for only one percent so you know i hear people doing trending trending plus one etc but i'm you know promoting it roughly one percent so you can see your 300 dollars in sales for this new campaign only paid three dollars that's to me worth it i don't really want to spend more than that when the item is going to sell anyway so promoted listings is something you can do to boost your sales I've seen people do 7%, 12%, 20%. I tried one at 100% just to see if it would sell quickly. It did. Uh, obviously, I lost money on that item because I sold it for $20 and I had to pay $20 in final value fees plus shipping and PayPal. And, you know, I just wanted to see, you know, what happens when you do that. It's kind of ridiculous that that's even an option that you can even do 100%, but I get it. It's because if you have more than one item, you want to quickly get a sale. And if you're doing 100%, eBay is putting that everywhere to try to move that item for you. Then after you sell the first couple, back off the um, promoted listings range, slowly lower it to whatever you feel comfortable with. But now you have that rank because you've you started to rank for previous sales. And again, an item that sells more often is going to do better than just one that's promoted. So you can do both. Again, experiment with the four different types of promotions that I recommend, and then also promote listings. That should help you boost your listings as much as possible. And again, recognize that you don't need to do any of this. You can just list a good item at a good price, and that's it, and it will sell. You don't need to do any of this stuff. Most people do this stuff because they're just, they wanna distract themselves from just sourcing great products. So again, don't procrastinate. Source really good items then do promotions as a way to boost your sales, not to get sales. All right, guys, see you in the next section. In this section, we're gonna go over the four most common business policies that I use. You can set these up in the account section with the business policies. You do need a store for this, at least a basic subscription. Set up your business policies, you opt in, then you can set up templates. And then when you're listing, it makes listing a lot faster. So I'm gonna go over the, the business policies that I use and hopefully it can help you save time. So the first one is USPS expedited shipping. This is my default shipping rate. Most of the items I sell are shoes and I ship cubic. So I ship on the platform pirate ship, but if I decide to use the eBay shipping, it is cheaper with top rated seller discounts. Um, if you have one day handling or less, um, I usually have same day handling, but you can adjust this depending on your business model. Um, once you're done adjusting everything, just save it. I do $25 and I ship direct. I do not use the global shipping program. You can, it just makes it more expensive for the end customer. I don't have enough international customers to turn this off. I have about uh, I'm sorry, I don't have enough international problems to turn this off. I have roughly 12% international sales. So I could try the, the global shipping program, but I like to keep the cost low for my customers. Also, I'm not sure if you guys knew this, but the final value fee is not charged on international shipping. It's only charged on domestic shipping. That's one of the reasons why I don't offer free shipping because there's no such thing really as free shipping. Um, so I've built the cost into it, but by having a lower sale price, I actually have less fees instead of doing it free shipping. So that's like a hack that I use to reduce my final value fees. Uh, return policy, I have 30 days buyer pays return shipping. I let my customers know on the listing, if they have a problem with the problem with, with the listing, I'll actually pay for return shipping if they contact me first. Um, the reason why I have that is because I don't want them to incorrectly market item not as described to get out of paying for return shipping. 
So some customers are honest and they'll put um, doesn't fit and they'll return it for that reason and they'll pay the shipping. Um, but if it's something, you know, like it was a more of a periwinkle than a turquoise blue and I get a return for that reason, I don't want them to mark it was not as described. I want to have them market a different reason so I don't get dinged on my metrics. So that's why I have buyer pays return shipping, but I'm totally willing to pay return shipping if the customer contacts me first to make sure they don't mark it incorrectly. Payment policy wise, I only have immediate payment required. I don't have accounts receivable, meaning I don't I don't actually send I don't accept offers. If somebody makes me an offer, I basically lower the price to that amount and decline their offer. Uh, because I don't want to wait for payment. Um, I like all the money up front. Otherwise, you know, what happens is when I lower the price, it gives everyone an equal opportunity to buy the item. And it's happened to me many times when someone makes an offer, uh, uh, you know, for let's say 80% of the value, I lower it to 80% of the value and somebody else buys it. I'm obviously going to give them the first shot at it because I'm going to message them back saying I'm declining your offer and lowering it to that sale price but it creates some urgency. That way I don't have to wait around for money. It's miraculous how people come up with the money, even though they have a crazy excuse for where they're, when they're gonna be waiting for six paychecks from now when they pay you. Amazingly, they can pay right away if you lower the price because they don't wanna miss out. Um, so the next one is local pickup only. Um, right now I only have 15 listings that are in this section, but again, take advantage of local pickup. It's a great opportunity to meet up with your customer. And if you uh, do the transaction in a, in, a, in a safe place, I recommend a bank or a parking lot of a, of a public grocery store or something like that. Um, it's a great way to save on shipping fees. And it if the item is expensive, I think it's worth your time. If it's really cheap, probably not. Um, I'm only going to really you know, deliver an item that's like over $500. So it's just something, depending on what your time is worth, I think local pickup is a fantastic way to get sales right away. And then also, you know, take note of if you have similar items, bring those with you and maybe you can double score on a local sale. And on the second, third or subsequent sales, you don't have to pay any fees because you've already got that customer. And again, it's just, you're just paying eBay for that initial marketing buzz then, you know, obviously an upsell is a great way to maximize your, your revenue. Okay, we're gonna go over offer to likers, which is one of the most powerful tools in your eBay arsenal. So here at send offers eligible, you can see I have 86 available. So you can click this um, and then you can find out which ones are available. So I recommend when you're just getting started, literally click on every single one of these one by one and offer your buyers at least a 5% discount. And the reason why I say that is because there's gonna be certain items that you have a lot of margin on and that's okay. You want to maybe give them an even better deal just to get it to move if you're looking for some action in your store and getting more sales. Again, I recommend you do it one by one just so you can get used to it. And it's really important to get an idea of your market. It's 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 one of the most important things that you can do in your business is just have a really good idea of what's in your store. You're gonna notice a lot of mistakes in your pictures and titles when you do it one by one. And that's great practice for getting your store going. You can save it up and do it all on one day. If you guys can see, one day I sent out 2,000 um, of those offer to likers and had you know a $2,500 day. And, and you know I usually don't use offer to likers because I don't want to discount my items. But if you need a boost in sales, like right now, you can see we're having a bit of a pandemic right now. So sales are really random. Like I had an $85 day and then a $700 day the next day. So it's important to recognize what your store should do based on your 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 volume. So for me, I'm actually with this amount of of listings, I'm expecting six hundred dollars in sales, and I'll show you how I come up with that. So here in the active listings, I'm looking for half a percent a day or fifteen percent sell through. So if you type in one hundred and twenty four thousand times point oh five, I'm sorry, um, fifteen percent. Um, you'll see I'm supposed to do $18,670 a month in sales. That's 15%. If I divide that by 30, that's $622. So my objective is $622 a day. So I'm going to come back here and look at my average sales. I can see that I'm, I'm above that, um, but probably it's a little bit skewed because I did the crazy offer to liker thing and that 
gave me higher than average results. And then recently, we have had a downturn in the economy, so results are lower than expected. But over the course of a month, it should even out. So you can use offer to likers as a way of maintaining the sell through rate that you're looking for. That's like a good way to look look at it because again, in order to use offer to likers, you have to offer a discount. So it's great if you have some margin, if you're selling items that are replenishable and you're already working with small margins, um, it's challenging. So again, you need to understand both what you expect your store to do um, and then also, um, you know, what kind of velocity you're looking for. How fast do you want to sell items? If you want to sell items really quickly, then as soon as you get a liker, you could just offer a 50% discount. And you're probably going to convert that immediately because that person was already interested at full price. So again, I like to just slowly do it because if you um, give away the farm, so to say, then it's kind of like, what's wrong with this item? Why is this person so desperate to sell it that they're offering a $100 item at $40 today, right? So Again, use your discretion, but offer to likers is a powerful tool to get sales going. I would, at the very least, um, wait a couple of days so that the effect is a little bit more dramatic. And then also you can get an idea if your items will sell on their own. Um, you know, just if you, because the, the items will accumulate watchers. Um, so when people see four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 people watching, they're more likely to buy it at full price. So again, don't get addicted to offer to likers because it's just taking away from your bottom line. See you guys in the next section. What's up guys? I'm gonna go over my workspace here just to give you an idea of just how little room you could run in uh, an eBay or an online store. Um, so I don't have any extraneous stuff here. It's important to declutter to make sure you don't have anything here that can distract you from getting work done. Um, I have a notebook to keep track of my processes, a stopwatch. I also have a, a tomato timer over here for the Pomodoro method. I will time 20, 40, 60, or four hour increments and see how much work I can get done. A scale, everything is within reach. All the different shipping supplies are literally right here. So this is only about a five by five space. You do not need that much room. On my Amazon reseller link below, I have all the cheat sheet already made. So you guys can basically copy my setup for free. Um, all the supplies I use for eBay and all the books that I use uh, that I like to read to help me organize the space are all here for free. So hope you guys enjoy it. Also, you should bookmark the USPS free supply Go over page. a couple of tips here. The first one is have a donation pile. So I have this Ikea bag and it just slowly fills up with items. And once it's full, I just donate that. These are items that haven't sold in a while or the average selling price is lower than my desired amount. So I just have it right here so I can continuously add at least one item a day. So donate at least one item a day that doesn't fit your criteria. Um, then I go over journaling all ideas every day. So here's a shop closing sequence. Load packages for pickup. There's one. Um, two. Uh, take out trash. So right here is the trash for the day. Um, add to donation pile. So this is the donation bag. Then turn off the lights in my storage and then put the locks on. That's it. So that's how you would write a standard operating procedure. Uh, you can see here, these are just some notes that I took today. Um, so I journal every single day. This is my 30 day month of the glance calendar and it just has um, notes and ideas. So you can see the date. And then I picked up some different ideas that you know, go for a walk, deep work, etc. This is stuff that you can do every day in general. And then this, these are the 20 tips for this video that I made today that I wanna go over. And I just put a dot for each one that I covered in a video. So you can knock out what you wanna do each day. Um, and then finally, I wanna go over setting up a goal. So in this store, the public one, I want 15,000 active and I wanna serve 3,000 customers a month. So it says here, Decide how many people you want to serve. I think that's one of the most important questions. So in this one, I wanna serve 3000 customers. That's 140 listings Monday through Friday. Then you can kind of get an idea of what kind of store do you want. If you only wanna serve 100 customers, you're gonna approach this totally differently and be more of a boutique experience. For me, I'm sort of creating like an assembly line that anybody can do. So that's why I wrote this sample closing sequence because you would have the same thing for opening, for photography, every type of project is gonna have a different sequence. You're just gonna write those down and then make them visible like I had in the previous uh, steps. So hopefully this is useful guys. I'll see you on the I next I recommend session. you have your processes 
uh, visible. So this is my shipping area, but it's also where I run sales. So I have an aged inventory process, a promotions process, and a customer service process here. Uh, in my photo area, I have the exact process laid out for my photography. Uh, stage the item, clean the item, complete the photo sequence, pack the process, the, the item into a clear poly mailer, upload it in the cell hound. I have different um, sizing metrics to make it easier. I have all the tools that I need um, right here. So we have, you know, stopwatch, tape measures, and then a visible cue on the sequence of the photos. So this just makes it a lot easier. Definitely have visible things in your work area. Also, there's nothing else in this area. Listing phone, tape measuring stuff, a Sharpie, and that's it. So clean, cluttered area. Make sure that your processes are visible to make it easy. It just really helps um, keep it streamlined. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to do a keyboard shortcut. So you're going to search for settings, then general, then keyboard. Now you're going to click text replacement. Now you're going to click the plus button on the top right. You're going to enter in the phrase that you want to shortcut and then a shortcut, which is a short code to pull this up. So because this is for eBay offer to watcher, I'm going to name it eBay O2W. And that's going to pre-populate my response to the customer.